The words that trigger a federal election. The Governor General, Mikhail Jean, will read the Conservative government's throne speech this evening. It will outline Stephen Harper's priorities for the next session of Parliament. The CBC's Julie Van Dusen is in the House of Commons getting ready for this tonight. Julie. Well, it's early yet, Heather, but uh, and you can't see it, but I'm surrounded by cameras for reaction tonight. And uh, members of Parliament are starting to trickle into, uh, you know, the foyer and go off to meetings. And uh, they've been gone for four months, so I've been kind of waving to them because I haven't seen them, many of them in four months. So I'll try to refrain from doing that. But it is a big day here on Parliament Hill. We've been talking about it for a long time. Once that speech is read, <clears throat> everything kicks in for something to happen. Um, people wonder why Stephen Harper would have to have a throne speech. It, it is an agenda, a blueprint, a to-do list of what the government wants, but it is an, kind of an odd, perhaps brazen move uh, for a minority government because the throne speech comes with built-in confidence motions and uh, those votes can bring down a government. Um, there are topics in the throne speech that uh, won't particularly sound new to many Canadians. Uh, talks about Afghanistan, the environment tax uh, cuts, uh, possible money for infrastructure, all things we've heard about. But the thing is, Stephen Harper looks at this, I would imagine, as a win-win situation because he feels very confident, uh, certainly by some of the polls that we've seen lately, that if the opposition parties bring his government down, that he is in a position to uh, win an election. He feels toe-to-toe. Uh, -to -toe. He's uh, head and shoulders above the other leaders on uh, an election trail. And if they decide to support his throne speech, he feels it's a win-win as well because he sees that as a green light to implement his agenda. Let's listen to the House Leader, Peter Van Loan. Our view is very simple. You can't say you're for something and vote for it in a throne speech on one day if you're the Liberal Party and then the next day turn around and start delaying and obstructing the very things that you pretended or claimed you voted for. So the choice we're putting to them is very simple. Uh, support our throne speech, uh, allow it to pass, uh, and then work with us to make those proposals become law. And if you don't agree with those proposals, you can take it to Canadians and ask them what they think and have an election. So that's a further echo of the Fisher cut bait line we heard earlier, I guess, yeah. Julie, from Stephen Harper, just how Peter Van Loan phrases it. But in response to that, how will Stefan Zion decide what to do? Well, that's what I found interesting in La Presse, uh, which kind of showed the dilemma that uh, these are the two uh, men of the hour, I suppose. Uh, the man with the smiley eyes, Stephen Harper, is the man with the gun, and the man with the worried eyes is Stefan Zion. Uh, he will be meeting with his caucus down the hall in, within the next hour. They had a five-hour strategy session yesterday, but the talk so far has been to try to find some way to support the speech and not go down because they smell a trap and they don't feel ready for an election uh, campaign quite yet. Thank you, Julie.